In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make quick custom gobos with Redshift. I've created a quick scene here um, that isn't too complicated to build. It's just um, an aerial light, a dome light, and a stage. Um, let me jump out so you can quickly see. Nothing too fancy. And the goal today is to recreate this gobo effect that is being created by our aerial light. So let's recreate this area light so we can hide this here so that we have no area light anymore and let's create a new area light once we have our area light created all we need to do is position this so that it's looking nice so we can move it back a wee bit we can kind of move it off to the right and what we can do once we have it in a position we like is we need to reduce the spread and once we start reducing we can see in our render view um, that that light isn't spilling as much and we have a, a stronger silhouette. Another thing we can do is we can add a tag in the um, animation tags, a target tag, and tag a hero object to the light so that the light is always looking at the hero object. We can make this light longer, we can move it up, we can make it smaller, just to kind of give, give the scene a little bit more interest. So we're just positioning, making the light bigger so that, you know, it kind of fills our whole stage, making it a wee bit thinner, just for more contrast. You can do whatever you want here, really. This is up to you. What we can do now is we add a graph. So we click add graph, and then we can double click this now. And what's cool is we can search for a, a max on noise. And if we connect that max on noise to our light, so we connect it here, we go into general intensity. That max on noise will now be the driver for our gobo. And we can do a lot with max on noise, just endless possibilities. So we've got a ton of parameters here. The kind of main things we should be looking at is we should have high contrast. Now we're not really getting a, a, a good accurate depiction of what's happening in our render view. Just bear with me one second and I so I can figure out what we've done wrong. Oh, it's because we still need our spread to be even smaller. So if we decrease our spread, we're starting to see that we're seeing some of that global action working now. So if we decrease our overall scale, you're starting to see the shapes now. So the smaller we get, the more kind of finer detail in our scale. So now we can really start to see some of that gobo working. If we bring this down even further, you can see this shape coming through a lot better. That's too much, it shouldn't be that sharp, so maybe we just increase it a smidge. And we can just kind of art direct the noise now. So whether we want, you know, wavy turbulence, um, whatever you want here, this is up to you. We can change the color of this using the temperature. So the lower this number here, the warmer it's gonna go. Um, in the opposite direction, it will get cooler. So this is done by Kelvin. And if you want to have this animated, 0.5 is a good option to have. It's a nice slow-ish movement. If you go above one, it's, it's quite quick. Another thing to look at is, um, Global illumination, I think the default one doesn't look too realistic. I usually bump mine up to three. If you want extra control, you can you can plug your max on noise into a ramp and kind of help with the contrast or the black and white values. If you want a more contrasted gobo effect, you can plug this in here. And then your ramp goes into your intensity. And now you can really affect the, the blacks and whites that you've got. So you can drive the blacks and whites from your max and noise directly into your intensity. And that, that can help you kind of art direct it even further. And um, if you learned anything new from this or you enjoyed this kind of tutorial, this is, I know this is kind of base level stuff. Um, but yeah, consider subscribing and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.